right, welcome to episode two. And as promised in the first episode, I'm going to touch on my programming. And I know this video can get extremely long if I really dive into all the nuts and bolts of the programming. So I'm probably gonna, you know, lean more towards the big picture as opposed to the small, minute details. Um, but before I get into that, um, I want to touch on what my priority is every time I step in the weight room. I think it's important that I point this out. Um, for me personally, my exercise form is the number one priority, regardless of any type of programming I'm doing. You know, performing the exercises correctly. Um, does a couple of things for me and I know I'm a stickler for form if you're you know watching these training clips um, you know not to sound overly arrogant or anything like that but I just feel very confident that the form is really really good because again I put a lot of emphasis into it and I put a lot of practice into it obviously when you train for 32 years you should have good form you know if I if I didn't have good form then shame on me for as long as I've been in the weight room and for the this is no joke. The millions of pounds of weight that I've moved over those 32 years, I better be good at the exercises. But I, a couple of things why I'm a stickler on form is that the first one, I just truly believe that it's really led to the longevity that I've enjoyed. Um, you know, again, I mentioned in the first episode that I've only suffered one major injury over the 32 years. I had a calf tear that I, that I sustained back in 2013. But outside of that, I mean, yes, I've had, you know, a couple of, you know, light strains here and there, but nothing major outside of that, um, that calf tear. So, you know, I really do believe that the form has played a huge role in keeping me pretty, pretty healthy. Um, so that for me is like, okay, my form, I need to make sure it's really good. So that way I stay safe and so I can keep enjoying the gym in the future. Um, so again, longevity is kind of like, you know, one of just basically getting better contractions and getting better stimulus. Um, so I'm kind of avoiding like excessive momentum, um, excessive body leveraging, like, you know, if like on a curls, like, you know, cheating and, you know, leaning way back in a, let's say a barbell curl. So I'm trying to avoid that. So again, so I could put majority of the work directly on the targeted muscle. And I feel like that has led to, you know, a lot of my progress and I can look back like, you know, prior to 2009, uh, or I should say up until 2009, um, my back development was always a step behind the rest of my physique. And that was the big knock on my physique was, Jeff, you need to improve your back. Um, so after the 2009 season, um, the year I won a couple of pro cards, I was like, okay, if I'm going to get on a pro stage, I know I'm going to get blown away. The main reason that I improved my back was, you know, basically just relearning how to do back movements. Um, you know, having better form. And, you know, just from that, um, I made some some huge strides. So that, again, so a couple of reasons, just like, okay, safety, you know, longevity. And then the other one is like, okay, ensuring that I'm getting the most progress in the weight room, you know, making sure form is where it needs to be. So just wanted to start off with that because I think that's a really important concept. Uh, especially for younger lifters, you know, who, you know, maybe a bit too eager for progress or the ego kind of gets in the way and, you know, the loading becomes a priority. And, you know, as loads come up, especially if it's, you know, too quick, um, you know, usually form goes to shit and basically, um, you know, a lot of injuries happen. So I really wanted to kind of point that out that, you know, even 32 years later, that is still my main priority is making sure form is where it needs to be. So getting to um, my programming. Right now, um, I'm trying to aim for a four-day split. Sometimes life gets in the way. I might only get three sessions in, but for the most part, I'm getting in four sessions per week with a lower upper, lower upper setup. Now, as far as the number of exercises, um, exercise selection. Um, some people will look at it and say, okay, Jeff, you're a minimalist. You're only doing about 10 exercises right now. Um, not so much that I feel like I'm a minimalist. Um, my approach for myself personally is, yeah, I've learned over the years, especially the last uh, five to seven years that I've learned that I can progress well with less. Um, so I've become really efficient 
in the weight room. So you'll notice like my lower upper split here that you know I'm doing no more than four exercises uh, in a given workout. And you know some people will look at it and go, well, you know you're not really doing any rear delt work, you're not doing direct trap work. Um, you know you're only hitting like you know cur you're only curling like hitting biceps directly once per week. Um, so there's there's of course a rhyme and a reason for that for that for myself. Um, so again, you know, just for example, if I'm squatting in a session, I'm doing leg curls and calf, you know, basically I'm hitting all body parts, uh, the lower body, you know, I'm hitting glutes with the squats, I'm hitting quads, low back, you know, so I'm getting good work there, leg curls, hitting hamstrings, calves, obviously doing standing calf press, I'm hitting calves, so everything's being touched, and even on the upper body days where, you know, on the first upper session, you know, I'm only doing a Smith bench press, I'm doing rows, and I'm doing a cable curl, and that's it, and, and people will go, well, where's the shoulder work, where's the tricep work, um, and again, my situation my past history, what I've learned is like, okay, if I'm if I'm hitting like a bench press, um, I'm hitting my pecs, um, I'm hitting you know my delts, I'm also hitting triceps. So those those muscles, even though you know let's say triceps aren't the primary driver of that movement, they're definitely assisting in that work. And you know if my loads are moving up over time, if you know let's say I'm doing more sets over time, then obviously even though it's indirect work the load and the, I should say, the workload is still going up, uh, you know, for my triceps. So basically, um, you know, not just, I just don't think of like volume as in just direct work, but also indirect work. I, I definitely, you know, think that has a lot of value. And again, I've learned through trial and error and through past history that I've made really good progress um, with this type of approach, uh, especially back in 2012, 2013 is where I really um, experimented with keeping my exercise selection on the lower side. Um, and and what, it, what it did for me was I can, you know, put more energy into those those few movements I can actually improve my form with them really well just because I'm practicing more with those movements and I can also keep track of my progress um, with those movements so um, and you know again I would select exercise I'd select exercises that are comfortable they're safe for me I know they're going to give me, you know, a good bang for my buck, meaning, you know, I'm targeting the musculature pretty well with those movements and I enjoy them. I think that's huge is enjoying them. So every time I go into the gym, you know, I have a focus like, okay, I got three movements here. I enjoy these movements. Um, I know what I did the, the previous session. So I'm like, okay, I need to try to better this. And, you know, I'm like, okay, you know, I'm going to get more practice with them. So for me, it's just a, a nice approach, and I and I enjoy it. Some other people, um, you know, maybe they need more exercises. Like, hey, you know, I like to have a lot more variety in there. It keeps me motivated. So there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but I also think, you know, it's on the flip side, you know, people who look at that my setup and go, oh, you know, you're not going to be able to, you know, hit the musculature or whatever. It's like, ah, eh, you know what? Not so much. You know, you do have to consider indirect work it's not like again the muscles not working like on a row for example your rear delt has to assist in the movement so it's not like your rear delts aren't getting any work whatsoever and I know there's going to be maybe an argument or debate around that which is totally fine um, but again we're talking about my experience here and what has worked for me so this is how I go about um, you know my exercise selection um, as far as the you know the, uh, the the progression scheme that I'm working right now so just to give context big picture context here um, so what this block of training this first block of training I have set up you know as I'm coming off of my contest prep and remember at the end of prep in a deficit um, you know low body fat levels you know energy levels leverages um, you know just everything you know is basically on the decline or you know, it's it's bottomed out. You know, just because you're in a you know at the tail end of a prep, you know, you're just you're bottomed out. So you have to think about okay, the environment now, like now that calories are coming up, um, you know, now that uh, you know you're trying to put body fat on, like that environment is very conducive to trying to get you know the loads worked back up. So it's almost like right now, I feel like. 
um, I'm like that newbie again who's like just stepping into the gym for the first time. I got all this energy. I'm motivated. I'm like, okay, you know what? I got you know body fat coming back on me now. Leverages, leverages are improving. So it's a good environment to focus on like getting my strength back up. So that right now, this block is, is basically just focused on trying to increase my strength or getting the loads work back up. So it's just, you know, simple linear progression. Like on a majority of my lifts, um, just have it set up in a way to where, um, you know, the, the, uh, the reps come down each week, but the load goes up. So for example, if I'm doing, let's say six to eight reps in week one, um, you know, week two, the reps are gonna go down to four to six, and then I'm gonna try to, you know, increase the load, you know, five to 10 pounds. And if it's a good day, I might go a little bit heavier than that. Um, so just, you know, that's basically kind of just this simple uh, linear approach that I'm taking with this block of training. And at the moment, I'm about four weeks into it. Um, I have the block set up for seven weeks, but right now the, four, uh, the first four weeks have been really successful. The loads are continuing to, to move up, and I do think on the majority of my lifts right now that I'm performing, um, there's potential to keep walking loads up for the remainder of this training block. Um, and not to say that after this training block, I, I know for certain how I'm going to set up the next training block. But what I'm going to do is at the end of this training block, so in week seven, I'm going to go ahead and probably take a deload. I'm feeling pretty good now. I feel like I can probably stretch this out another couple weeks. And then in week seven, I'll go ahead and take a deload there uh, just to help you know, reduce uh, fatigue levels down a little bit so that to help set up the next block of training so I'm recharged and re-energized to go again. But that next block, um, you know, in theory, let's say this first block, like I'm starting to get a little bit tapped out as far as increasing loads, like if I'm reaching more of a ceiling, then I'll probably go ahead and make a transition with the next block and, and go towards more like accumulation, meaning getting, uh, trying to aim for more volume through, through sets. Um, so instead of loads, so the loads will stay relatively, um, the same. Uh, it's smart not to try to force things too much after that. It'd be like, okay, let's, you know, let's not try to force the load. Um, again, I don't want to risk injury, you know, so it's like a, driving a car and you're getting the RPMs pretty damn high, you know, you need to shift gears. Like if you don't shift gears, um, that, that RPM is going to be too high. Your, your engine is going to start to overheat. And if you're staying in those RPMs a little too high, too long, um, you're going to end up breaking that motor. So I want to make sure that I'm, you know, being smart. So we'll assess it at the end of this block. And if I feel like, yeah, we're topped out, as far as the potential or we're getting close to that ceiling for the moment anyways of trying to increase the load i'll shift the uh, shift gears and look towards like accumulating a little bit more volume through through sets versus load um, and then probably once that next block is complete i'll have to reevaluate reassess where i'm at um, chances are i'm going to be pretty fatigued because the volume like if i'm doing a lot of sets at the, in that volume I mean, with that block, then yeah, I'll probably have to have um, like a recovery block set up where we're going to bring the volume way back down to reduce uh, some fatigue. And the, and the size of that block, that could be, that could be, you know, one week, it could be two weeks, it could be four weeks. Um, it just depends. And, you know, I want to basically give myself the room to make audibles. You know, with my experience level, it makes no sense to, let's say, program three blocks and think I'm going to run those perfectly as they're prescribed. I need to basically make sure that I'm using my experience, which is huge. If you're, you know, maybe if you're listening to this and you're not experienced or you're, you know, maybe a beginner or intermediate, maybe you don't have that experience to, to make these audibles that well. Um, so yeah, I mean, maybe you're gonna follow something that's a little more um, rigid um, until you kind of figure things out. But for me, it just, you know, 32 years training experience makes no sense to say, okay, here's, Here's 20, 20 weeks of training or whatever and say you're going to follow this perfectly. Um, so I'm definitely going to call audibles. So that's kind of like the big picture of, of kind of uh, how the next maybe, you know, couple of months, two, three, four months are going to go. Um, and, I, and again, I'm going to assess after each block, you know, how did I perform? Is there room to 
to to keep moving things up? Do I need to back it off a little bit? Do I need to increase food? Do I need to increase body weight? Because sometimes you know maybe you know for the demand of the training, I may need to to eat a little bit more, or I may need to gain a little bit more weight to help out with leverages. It kind of just depends how things are going. But right now, my primary uh, focus um, is on performance. It's not so much aesthetics anymore. It's like, okay, I really want to try to get my performance moved up. I really want to get my loads right now worked up. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. Now I am about four weeks. This is my fourth week into this uh, off season. And so far, um, things are moving really well. Like my ability to increase loads is there. And again, it's because of the environment that I'm in. I got a lot of calories coming in now. I'm gaining some body weight. So again, as far as like, if you think about, you know, an analogy, uh, supply and demand, like the demand of the training is getting harder. Yes, because, you know, the loads are going up. So the demand is going up. Um, but my food levels, the supply is matching that demand. So that's why things are going really well. Um, but I am noticing that recovery is uh, getting a little bit harder. So as these loads keep going up, I know that my recovery needs to be a huge priority. It should be it should be emphasized just as much as the training itself. So right now, of course, you know, I have three assigned rest days during the week, but I, uh, I'm definitely going to be auto regulating if I need to. So if like I need an additional rest day, I'll definitely take it. And so instead of, let's say getting four training sessions in a seven day period, you know, maybe I get four sessions in, in a, in an eight or nine day period. Um, because take it, sometimes you need that rest. And if you, let's say you get in the gym a little too prematurely, let's say you're not really feeling all that great like you're a little bit off like you know chances are you're not going to perform all that well during that session so maybe you lose a little bit of volume because of that um, and you're also you know maybe a little more at risk for injuries or for developing aches and pains and you have to factor in too is if you do that workout prematurely um, then you're probably you know more than likely going to feel even more beat up after the session so it can bleed into your future workouts so for me personally um, like I'm a fan of like, hey, if I'm not feeling it today, I'm going to take this day off. That way tomorrow I can probably perform better. And then that way, you know, future workouts, you know, I'm not, I may not interrupt those. Um, so that's kind of my thought process there. But I'm going to, I'm going to leave it here. This is a very long video, but hopefully you guys found it informative. And uh, yeah, any questions, concerns, or anything like that, feel free to comment. Um, and uh, we'll talk to you guys uh, on the next one. He said, yeah. One more, happy to oblige. I almost finished on the one. Should I let out one more? <laughs> yes, Google, let out one more. Absolutely. This is going to be our amazing. Oh, and did you ask for a yes, Google, let out one? Yes. <laughs> hey, I got the best one saved for next. Want to hear it? That's pretty good. Yeah.